are listening to Gorecast, you idiot. Rick Diaz, what's up, brother? <laughs> what's up, hey, Gorecast? Gorecast, dude. Thanks <laughs> for coming, awesome. dude. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> appreciate you. Um, so are you a, you're a metal guy too? We were talking about that when you were here for Mike's podcast, right? I, I love metal, but I'm not like uh, like I wouldn't uh, classify myself as a as a metalhead as uh, a, as an, as an I know the bands I know, and I listen to the bands I listen to, but then I I don't try to expand my knowledge that much. Okay, can you give me a few? Well, I mean, it's just what I listened to as a as a kid, you know, like Metallica, Megadeth, yeah. Sepultura. A and little bit of, you're from Brussels. I was raised in Brussels. Raised in Brussels. But I was born in Spain. Born in Spain. Okay. Yeah. The metal scene out in that part of the world is crazy. Way yeah. way way bigger and better than it is here. Like. Well, in some places. Well, the, uh, here, the irony but. is most of the bands are American, right? But yeah. But I feel like the the um, especially back in the day, like the we are le we were less um, Puritan into uh, the crowd part of it, right? So what do you mean? Well, uh, like in Europe, people like that would go to metal concerts are more unleashed than yeah. Here. Yeah, it's crazy. Because we have the soccer culture and let's mm. do a little more like, let's fucking go. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, let's tear so it it's up. It's fun, yeah. Have you ever seen like the videos of Vakken before? Of what? Vakken. Uh, w A C K E N. Uh, oh, like the okay. giant circle pits going around the those. giant stage. Oh, yeah. oh I, I, well, I've never been in one of those. I've, yeah. seen, I've, I've done that in like a small metal concerts. Oh, okay. Like, You've like, done a circle like, pit? Local, like local shows, yeah. Hell yeah. No, I, I, I stay around. I stay, yeah. I stay adjacent. You're one to of the, these guys that like puts your hand out. Yeah, I'm just like, I, don't, dude, I wear glasses. Yeah, you got to be careful, dude. I wear glasses. It is a big deal. I'm really blind. So like if I lose my really? glasses, yeah, if I lose my glasses, it's a, it's, a, it's a problem. I used to be. Yeah. I got LASIK when I, I was 18. I can't get LASIK. Why? You have astigmatism or something? I have astigmatism, but they told me if I, if I get LASIK, first of all, my, my vision is going to continue to degrade over the years. So mm -hmm. I'm going to need it again. Um, they have the... the um, what you call the eye doctor told me like it's like a like a what do you call this like uh like you know the things that you use for for pavement to break the pavement the yeah jackhammer jackhammer i had a sledgehammer in my head i was like yeah jackhammer so it's like it's like lasik is like like a jackhammer in your eyes right so the more you need to take off so the more residue there is and the least guarantee you have a perfect result okay and he was like, if it's going to just be for cosmetic reasons, I wouldn't right. do it in my case. Yeah. That's what he told me. So I was like, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like I have, like, like my vision is still kind of getting worse. Even though it, I, it I had it when I was 18, and it's yeah. still, you know, it's over 10 years later, and I'm still, it's still pretty good. But it's like sometimes at night, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Um, it's because the, of all the jerking off, dude. Yeah, it is. You're right. I got to stop. Really. <laughs> um, <laughs> the glasses would be if you lost the glasses do you think that would be a, pro uh, a problem for your for your image dude you think you could if i lost like them? if you were if you did, did lace if you did let's say you got lasik no. and took the glass no you no. no okay good i don't think it's a problem and i could get different glasses i have i have i have the the ident the exact same pair but just as a replacement you have like 47 different no, 47 of the same one i have this one and another one <laughs> yeah. just in case yeah. you should sell them as merch just like I some should, fake ones. I mean, the frame is not cheap. It's like some French brand, mm -hmm. like like Porsche brand, and they did a, a re-edition of old models. So it's like okay. So the original model may be from like I don't know what year. Like, they do look very studious and like yeah. the people that wrote the Constitution or something. Well, I found know? a photo of like a photo of my great grandfather rocking out, rocking rocking pretty much the same glasses. Okay, which oh. is why I got these. I was like, oh, nice. it looks amazing. Sweet. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for coming on, dude. I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to chat with you about some stuff. You're an interesting dude. So you do, uh, you do, you did comedy in Brussels, right? Originally, I, is that where you started? Or no, did you I start started in, Spain? in Thailand. Oh, in Thailand? Yeah. Crazy. I lived in Thailand for five years. Oh, okay. Before well, coming back to Europe, what was that like? It was great. I yeah. was in Bangkok, Thailand. It's a very convenient city. I mean, a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. but very. Like, I want to go there so bad. Oh, it's a lot of fun, and it's uh, it's very uh, developed. There's a lot of malls and cinemas. Food and slaps. Food slaps, yeah. yeah. It's Hell yeah. So what was doing comedy in Thailand like? Do you just do it in English? Or? Yeah, just in English. Okay. I did, I did. We did like one or two shows in French, but oh, okay. um, that's it. Yeah, no, mostly English every day. I mean, yeah. every day, every, every show was in English. And you did English comedy before you did French comedy? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. How is it different? I've always been curious about, like, how how it's different like as far as like the i don't know if like the cadence changes or mm. like like is there a way to describe how it's different I you can. know doing it in a different language like, i mean i do it in in i do one liners right so right um it's it's even that is a, like a subset of problems that's a bit different but yeah 
I would argue that um, English has a lot of words that have uh, more nuances. So you're, you can, there's more vocabulary in English than there is in French, I think, okay. in total number of words to express ideas. Sometimes in English, with one very simple word, you can express very, like a lot of concepts. Uh -huh. Whereas in French, you have to use the, the specific word. It's, it's a bit more... Like, a double, right like in English, you have like double yeah. meaning words kind yeah. of thing? The, there's that in French as well, just less than in English. Okay. And also in French... Uh, most words have more syllables. Mm. So you'll end up with uh, more syllables per phrase and the syntax is not the same. So it's hard, it's it, it, you have to do more workarounds to put the punchline word towards the end. Oh. So sometimes you'll have to spoil a punchline with a, and follow it up with a couple of words. So you have to speed up so like so that it, it feels like a like a single punchline. Whereas in English you can you can just do do your pause and finish with your punchline word. Yeah. Sometimes in French you can do it, but sometimes it's more difficult. Just because That's, of uh, syntax. Yeah, that that is just so beyond my comprehension. Just because I don't speak any other languages, yeah. and I I never really like paid attention in school. You know, when in language classes, it was just like whatever I had to do to get it done. But I I I I, I know like I can hear like certain words in Spanish a little oh, bit yeah. and like know a few of them. But like, dude, I I couldn't imagine. I can like I'm just getting used to writing jokes. Well, imagine that in uh, English, I don't even can't even think about uh, starting a different language. Phrase construction in French is pretty similar to phrase construction in Spanish. So if you've learned, if you had any Spanish lessons, mm -hmm. uh, Fr French is pretty much built the same way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my knowledge is so limited there, but um, yeah, I was I was so. Do you? Uh, you still go and do a lot of shows in French or like when yeah. you're over at home, are they all French or are you doing them in English or is it like no, a I, I do half English. and half? It's, no, it's uh, I would say it's like 70% French roughly. Oh, yeah. Okay. I do shows in English every week, Yeah. Um, but I do, I perform in French almost every day. Oh shit. Just an uh, opportunity. Yeah. It's practice. Yeah. yeah it's, it is. It's at the end, it's stage time. It stage doesn't matter time. much. It's stage time. Getting used to being up there. Getting used to being up there, yeah. going through your material. Even if it's in a different language, okay, you can, but you still get a feel for is the premise funny? Right. Is the punchline funny? Is the, even if the word might not be the exact right one, but okay, mm -hmm. am I going in the right direction to get a laugh with this idea? Yeah. And you're still doing crowd work and you're still, you know. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that the premises are, like the same premises that work in Austin, for example, would in, be funny to people in France too, or is it, is it pretty? For the know? most part, except the uh, well, the one difference with I mean, well, because I started comedy in, in Thailand. In mm -hmm. Thailand, it's a uh, I was doing comedy for a bunch of uh, foreigners, so I had to. I do non-referential comedy for the most part. I'm not doing you know I don't talk about local news. Right. I just talk about general ideas. And life like, stuff. Life stuff. Yeah. But in Austin, you can say wild shit yeah that you just can't say in europe you mm. just can't yeah you can't you're gonna get arrested in you're some gonna places. get arrested or something yeah <laughs> like Br brian holtzman w could not have a career in europe right now <laughs> it's, got, it's gotten pretty bad like I, awesome, I, th though. there is a, there is a value to freedom of speech here. and also it's not freedom of speech is more most mostly i think it'd be the crowds understand in a, to a larger extent that the comedian is joking right whereas over in belgium they still don't get that always. They still feel like no, this is re this reflects the true opinion of what this oh. guy thinks. It's funny. He's funny. It's funny. And so and he's fucked up. Like yeah, he, he wouldn't say funny. that if he didn't think that. Mm. If he came up with that idea, it must be that he's really closely related to the idea. Right. Like if it you make a pedophile he, joke or something. Yeah. It like, means well, why are you talking about kids, man? Like yeah. why? I mean, yeah. unless unless they get, you have to really like sell your character really well so uh -huh. they understand you're joking. Right. Otherwise, they're like, oh, man, that's this guy's fucked sad. Up. This is fucked up. Like, why are you? That's crazy. There's but not a lot of comics that do. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. If you have the right technique, like if you're good enough, you you can do it. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's yeah. just harder. Whereas here, it's like, yeah, of course, he's fucking he's just right. He's joking. just he's just trying to make us laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of dangerous almost. Like, it is. Like to for like they should lighten up over there, dude. They do. They do. <laughs> There's a, a couple of venues. I had a consent joke that was killing here. Uh -huh. And I tried it a couple of times to see if it would work there, and people got angry at me. Like, why would you even say that? I'm like, damn, pussy. Okay, <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's like, no, I don't want to rape anyone. It's right. just a bloody joke, dude. It's like, I'm trying, I'm trying to see if it works. It didn't work, so I'm not gonna say it again. Like, mm -hmm. don't worry. I'm, just, but I, I'm letting the audience judge my jokes, not the venue owners. Yeah, yeah. So your career has kind of like. It's kind of like blown up out of nowhere. It's at the beginning of taking uh, off. At the I beginning of taking off out yeah. of nowhere. But like, in is that synonymous with like other countries, or is that do, like do people in 
Brussels and and you know wherever else wherever else you've you've traveled and done comedy do they understand what's going on with with you here like all Not this fully. Tony some stuff? some people do some people don't okay. so um in the french speaking scene they had no idea what Kill Tony was really they they barely know us comedians except for for people that do speak english and have an interest but a lot mm -hmm. of like Uh, French-speaking comedians don't speak English that well, oh. so they're not even following up what's happening in the UK or the US right. or anything. They just don't know. But 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 once but they but they but but you know but people were talking like when I got back and they mm -hmm. were like maybe maybe I should research what the maybe hell this guy see, has yeah. done. And they were like so it got me some respect because I understood this guy has gone to America and he's done well. Yeah. So that got me some respect. Um, and in the English comedy scene it got me quite a lot of respect how important is that to you like like one versus the other like do you i don't do you, do you would you rather be more you know doing more stuff over here and being more famous or popular over here yes okay you think yeah. that that's where like the that's where the the real future is well it's not about a future but well, yes there's yeah. there are more opportunities here it's a bigger market here but it's mm -hmm. mostly like stand-up is an american thing yeah is it so, is it yeah, is it is It is. I mean, I guess com I never comedy. I've never thought about that. Really. Comedy is not an American thing, but stand up is, was, is an American thing. Yeah. And so, like, it's I, an American I, past, a great American past. Yeah. Time. So, like, as, as a, f you know, I just watched, what I saw it like on Seinfeld and other mm -hmm. TV shows, and I was like, that's, I want to go do it in America. I don't yeah. wanna, it's cool to do it in Europe, but it's like, if you want to play, if, you, if you're a soccer player in the US, What's your dream? To be a great soccer player in the U.S. or to go to Italy, the U.K. Oh, or Spain? Oh, for sure, the U.S. soccer doesn't matter. Like Ex in the world, on the world scale. Exactly. Right? So yeah. it's the same thing. Like English stand-up outside of the U.S. Yeah. matters a bit in the U.K. and in Australia, like, yeah, that but that's like. it. Yeah. You have to come here. Right. You have to. If you if you want to know whether you're any good, you have to come here and test yourself. And it's almost like you would have to come here to get like famous enough so that enough people care back where you came from yeah, right? yeah 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 i mean right now the thing is Similar like for example music. my ability to sell tickets in europe is the same it's the same as before in yeah. before you ever went on kill tony kind of yeah. a little more maybe yeah but, so i i can't f expect that venues are gonna want to book me now mm -hmm. more than, i mean a little they do because now the, the, the difference is now they can advertise their shows uh showing my my youtube clips on kill right. tony Yeah. So now they have a marketing tool to explain this guy's coming here. Right. Look what he's done in America. Look what he's done, and look at look at the laughs and he's getting, and the and that will validation help. he's getting from professionals. Nice. So that's okay. good. Yeah. But in but otherwise, it's I'm not like known. Yeah. Exactly. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of the same as like music. A lot of the time, if you just on a much smaller scale, like yeah. just like for us anyway, like we had to leave. I'm in a band too, and we had to leave our hometown basically before like anyone gave a shit and to go tour other places and then people are like oh when are you guys gonna play at home again and it's like you know where were you guys when we were fucking you know we've always had decent like good support from friends and family and stuff but like where were the where were just the the regular you know metal fans in yeah. portland you know until we tour with whatever big band and and came here you play metal yeah what I'm kind in metal of metal band. do you play it's like uh i don't know people call it uh, a progressive death core Deathcore. It's just there's so many subgenres. Those are dude. three genres put together. Exactly. Progressive yeah. is a genre. Chill. Death yeah. is a genre. And yeah, exactly. Core is I don't a know. genre. I I just have like I just call it metal now. Is it fast or is it slow? It's like uh, you know Meshuggah. No. 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 Oh, dude, I told you. you. I'm right. You got to know what I know. You got to write. How do I spell now? that? M e s h u g g a h. They're from Sweden. Okay. And they're like one of the biggest. They're they're really dope. I they're think you'll like it. Progressive deathcore. No, I wouldn't know what to call. I don't know. What, they're like they kind of created their own genre. Yeah. Uh, and it's called it's people hate this word in the metal scene, but it's called gent D J E N T, and it's it's an onomatopoeia of like the sound that the guitar tone made, and it was kind of a joke, but it's kind of like become this like stupid subgenre thing it was more popular like 10 years ago to say to call stuff that and now it's kind of ironic a joke but it's like dun, 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 you know like like because it's like a <laughs> and that's what you very, do well that's just like mashuga is kind of like if if everyone in the in our little subgenres being honest mashuga is like the backbone of like ev like they're influenced they've influenced every band that influenced us okay what's it's the like, name of your band it, it's called bystander By, like in one word or two words? Just one word. Is B it on Spotify? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're on it. there, dude. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, you might not like it. I don't know. If you like, if you don't like, I'll give uh, you an honest review. Maybe you'll like, yeah, yeah. Give me, just give me an honest review. <laughs> leave me a shitty YouTube comment, dude. Just to, this guy Ugh. sucks, and I did his podcast. He's a fucking asshole. I'd, I'd rather battle hands, Kim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any day, dude. Um, uh, but yeah, the I forgot what was going with that. Um, Gin. it's like groovy. It's like like there's groovy grooviness to it. Like what, what instrument do you play? Like I'm the vocalist of the band, so, so I do like what kind of vocals do you do? You know, screaming vocals and is stuff. It, or is yeah. it more? Or can, can people understand what you're saying? I feel like I'm pretty pronounced. Like I, you can kind of hear what I'm saying compared to some people that are just like, you know what I mean. But I but have it's very growly. It's growly and yelly, yeah. And okay. I do like the high pitch, like black metal s- s- screaming sometimes. This but is why this is this is why I prefer trash metal. Yeah, you I, I prefer more natural voices mm-hmm. than I prefer uh, like death metal voices, yeah. which is why I'm, I'm, I struggle with death metal because the whole. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it, it, to that me, was pretty good, dude. Yeah, I know, but it's, it, to me, it ruins the the rest of the music. Yeah, because I, I want to hear the riffs. I want to hear the you know. Right. I want to hear the, that heavy sound. Yeah, and I feel like it's like a lot of uh, it's it's. A lot about picking your spots. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like picking spots to let them let the song like breathe. Let the song breathe. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I, I try to do I'm I'm not like scared to leave a whole thirty forty five seconds of no vocals and just let them riff, you know what I mean? Like but some people do it too much and I you know, my my scream is a little more like my voice, you know what I mean? And uh, but I do I did get the balls this this year to add singing. So I put like clean like uh I would say it's kind of not to give too much away yet because we're about to release it, but it's like uh, it's kind of like I just went back to my roots and added like Alice in Chains, kind of like grungy, oh, yeah. like '90s kind of cool. singing, and uh, I'm really happy with it. I went outside my comfort zone like big time, and you know I think stand starting stand up helped me find do, your confidence. It helped me just realize that it's gonna be okay. Like <laughs> if you try something, and even if it's not the best the first time like it's gonna be okay and you can just work on it and yeah it's funny like for when i was thinking about like my professional like my like my day job and how stand-up has helped that i was mm-hmm. thinking yeah the, the one th- good thing i liked about stand-up was i've, I've really improved in in my ability to take negative feedback oh yeah because yeah. so you go on stage you try a thing and at first you're like oh you're so sad that it failed and after a while, you're like, yeah, I'm just going to try stuff. The stuff that fails, I'll just take it out. The stuff that works, I'll do more of that. Right. And not wor- like on my day job or, or other things in my life, I do the same thing. I'll try that. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll try yeah. If that works, then I'll do more of that. It's not a bad rule for life. Yeah, like, in relationships, like, you know, right. how, how do you behave to your partner? Or how do you, mm-hmm. like, is it, should I be more like this? Should I be more like that? Just try it out. Yeah, there's no, I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen is you. You're going to bomb. You're going to bomb, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And you might not, and it might not be in stand-up. You can bomb in other things in life, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, but like, for example, like with my parents, I was like, okay, how do I improve my relationship with my parents? So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I need to establish boundaries, which I was afraid to do before. But now I'm like, oh, I'll just be like, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. Right. And, oh, nothing happened. Yeah, you're and not going to call me that anymore, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? No, but like you, but but you, but be, I, before I would be afraid of saying those things, but now I'm just, I, I'm just saying them without being angry. Right. Just try it out and see the reactions. Like, oh, it worked. Great. Yeah. Right. But yeah. it's just, yeah, we, we're you, less afraid of trying things out. You have to, yeah, I think so. Because you have to jump. It, Dude, in playing music, I could play a metal show in front of 10,000 people right now. Like, yeah. you could be like, dude, Taylor, you're on in 10. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and just, like, feeling like I'm in my PJs. Just comfortable. But going up, like, doing stand-up for the first time, first couple times, yes. it's like, yeah, I'm still even, like, I'm finally after one. I've been doing it for one year, so I'm very yeah. new. Oh, yeah. But, like, uh, in the I, competitive scene, though, like, in a very, like. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, it's like, it's the talent. There's so much talent here that. It's it's like I'm fine just knowing that I'm gonna be sitting at the bottom of this totem pole for a long time until oh, I get yeah. better. And my hope is that it, like when I'm I'm 32, like by the time I'm 40, the podcast will be grown and I'll be a little bit funnier. You know what I mean? I'll be better at stand up hopefully if I keep trying. So I don't know. I'm just I'm pretty self aware, but I'm just trying to learn from people that have been doing it for a long time and talk to them and figure yeah. out what I'm doing wrong and. You know, people are even in a to call it a competitive scene. It's like people are still really nice and supportive. Oh yeah, but it's not the same fake support that you get from like the music world. I don't know if you know of anything about this, but there's a lot of like for it. there's a lot of like yes ma- yes manning. You know, like yeah yes men. Yeah, like I know uh, what that means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a lot. There's a lot of like good job, dude. But like 
maybe it wasn't so good, you know? Oh. And the set, the thing is though, is I don't know. I've been talking, I've talked about that a lot on the podcast. Like I think music is kind of like a participation trophy sport where it's like, good job for trying. Everybody gets a good, good set, bro. You know, but it's like, there's not a lot of constructive feedback and like the crowd is definitely not going to give it to you because yeah, the crowd just applauds at the end of the song right that's it yeah. yeah for the most part unless you like really fuck you have to really <laughs> drop the ball yeah to, you have to really the fumble ball. the bag to fucking yeah. you know uh get people to boo you in a metal show it's, it's why i hate comedians that do music on stage because it's like a cheat code they do their thing yeah and then they get an applause at the end i'm like fuck you on your applause break dude i don't know ridley's gay creed was pretty good though so where do you draw the line like if you bring a guitar out or something ridley's gay creed is awesome but <laughs> it's also other people have done gay something you know right yeah you're right like you know you're gonna get an applause at the end sure because you, know, you tried music yeah but yeah. but to get an applause for a joke it's really hard but to get an yeah. applause uh by singing it's much easier I mean, to get people to make any noise from a joke is hard for yeah. me f from some the perspective of somebody starting you know what i mean i'm like dude Yester yesterday i was mid joke and this one guy was just like you're skinny I'm like, <laughs> what do like, i do with that dude that's, i know thank that's you that's kind of my whole thing <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's kind of my whole thing you're skinny <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like, there wasn't even a joke in it it was just like okay it's like the lights are on yeah <laughs> <Okay>. exactly <laughs> The sky's blue. Yeah. Pointing out facts. Like, if you're going to heckle me, make it funny. Yeah, you know or, I mean? or mean. But this was, I couldn't do, I had nowhere to go with it. Except Dude. I was mean to him. Yeah, that's what I went with it. Yeah. Um. So, how long have you been doing stand-up? Less than five years. Less than five years. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're like, and you're, I was noticing, because when I saw you at Roscoe's. Okay. Um, yeah, you saw me at Roscoe's. Yeah, with Ridley. Uh, You... I, that was the first time I saw you do a set. You did like thirty. Did minutes? I do thirty? No, 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 no Roscoe's. twenty or something. At Roscoe's, you were headlining. Like you headlined it. I think it was your show, wasn't it? At Roscoe's, no. Really? Yeah. Oh no! Well, it was the freak show thing. I don't. I don't remember. It was yeah, but at freak show, I feel like I just did a set, but it might have been a fifteen-minute set. Okay, maybe somebody went on after you, and I forgot. I I'm think sorry. so. Yeah. But you did. That was the longest I've seen you yeah, go up, sure. right? And so, uh, like, you're so high output, dude. Like, because you do, like you said, you do one-liners, mm. and it's like, that's so different from what I'm trying to do. Like, maybe I should try to write more one-liners just as a good practice to try to learn how to, like, write more jokes or learn how to write jokes better, like the structure of a joke. But, like, right now I'm just kind of, like, looking for things in my life and, like, just going up and kind of talking. And I think the whole thing I'm trying to do is just, like, get more comfortable with yeah, just but like the, the, being up there. At the end of the day, if you look at a, a professional that does, it feels like who's who looks like they're telling a story, mm -hmm. their output like last per minute is similar to mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just, it just, I, I have, I mean, yeah, it's interesting because a lot of people just know what I've done on Kill Tony, mm -hmm. but you've seen a longer set, so what yeah. was your impression? I mean, I, I, I'd have to think about it for a second to put it into words, but it was just... It was it was very boom 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 like yeah. joke after joke mm -hmm. you know kind of like I don't want to compare you to to him because you guys are different but like it was kind of like Nor Nor Mark Norman's was just kind of mm. like f firing shots constantly and then maybe there's like a little lull where you're trying you're trying to set something up but you're like and there's a lot of like uh, I feel like the punchlines you you almost throw them out so quick sometimes that you're like wait you you like wait for them, you're like you guys getting this and then they're like oh my god you know what i mean i have to wait i have to wait so long yeah. sometimes is it's that the same fun. is that the same in yeah. another country too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah. But it's fun it's fun like some i, I used to not have not be brave enough to wait yeah and i'd be like oh the joke bombed but now i'm like let me wait because maybe i just need to wait it out that's what's interesting about yeah. being living here and going to so many shows yeah. and seeing so many people that you're like oh man like i love it he usually goes a little slower in that bit not you but like seeing oh, yeah, someone yeah, else yeah. and like you you start to see like, oh he's he's rushing right now. Mm. Like he needs to slow down. You know what I mean? But there's no way to tell him. No, no, you yeah. Know what I mean? Same but for me. Same for like, what, the the comedians I perform with regularly. I I have I know I know they're rushing. I know they're going slow. I know mm. they're going fast. I know they they screwed up a, a bit. They yeah. screwed up. Oh, they they forgot to say that part. Yeah. yeah. I'm starting to learn that a little bit more. Or just like after watching people set, I'm like, oh man, like he's ah, oh, if he just would have slowed down. But that's part of the game. You know what I mean? But did you did you find that style naturally? like after trying different things or did you just go i'm gonna just write these like this is how i write and I, no I, I i it took me a while yeah what kind of stuff were you doing i was trying to write bits and i was not good at it 
Like, but then, but then I would write shorter things, trying to be like, in the spirit of like, let me write a quote, like something that be like, this phrase, this phrase, like, quote, mm-hmm. and then you know your name under it, like you know. Right. Okay. And I have like a little. I have more talent for that. Okay. So like, for, I, it just comes more naturally. Like that's what comes into your brain. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, not always, always a fully formed idea, but I love the idea of, of being like. Yeah, some people, somebody could just remember that quote. Mm-hmm. Some, you know, and people remember jokes of mine and they'll quote them back to me. So if, to me, that's a huge victory. Yeah. Because it's not a whole bit, you know? It's, it's like, but oh, but that one joke you had when you say this and this. Right. Because uh, some uh, people remember, happy. like, the name of whatever Dave Chappelle bit or something. Yeah, like, exactly. oh, you remember that bit about this? And it's yeah. like, but yeah. The I want, I want, well, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this is where I am now. I'm not insane, right? But, like, what I'd love to get to one day. It's, it's aspirational, right? It's, it's a dream. I'm not you saying that. I have dreams, baby. It's not where I will get, but what I, w- what I would love to get is to have that Mitch Hedberg quotability. You know what I mean? It's like. Yeah. Like You'll people, get there, dude. I don't know. I don't know. I, Mitch Hedberg to me is like. Because it's all it was all of it the the persona right. the coolness and what he, what he was did. saying what he did like everything all of it right yeah but it's like yeah how do you get to those jokes where people are like oh I, I'm gonna remember that joke yeah dude That's I remember what I'm so to write. many of those jokes too yeah. like yeah, the exactly. Dr Pepper Mr Pip joke <laughs> it, there's just so many of them exactly. I don't have a girlfriend but I just know a girl that would be really mad if she heard me say that you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, like, it's perfect and I heard that one time yeah on Comedy Central presents like. 20 years ago or something. And it stays. It does. And it is it is kind of crazy the mark that that dude left in the for short the amount, time yeah. he was doing, he was alive, you know? Yeah. Like no, it's, it's wild. How, yeah. Do you know how long he did stand-up for? I think longer than people give him credit for. Okay. But that's, that, I can't remember how long, but it was longer than people yeah. gave him credit for. He would be fucking huge right now. He would be. I mean, he would be huge any time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he was he, huge. He was huge, huge yeah. yeah. I guess I didn't realize. I felt like I knew underground. Like, it was because I was in, like, seventh grade, yeah. sixth, seventh grade when I started really getting into, like, comedy and watching Dave Chappelle's show. It was, like, right around mm-hmm. the age I, I was when it came out. And, like, I felt like all my friends were just, like, playing Halo. Like, they weren't listening to, you know, like, I would be like, dude, listen to this. Like, you know, and it was, like, stuff that people would probably turn their nose up at in the comedy. So, like, shit like uh, uh, Dane Cook stuff, you know, back in the day and Chappelle and... My dad would show me like Sam Kinison and stuff that he grew up listening to and shit when I got a little older, but I felt like I was showing my friends the comedy in my little circle. Like they didn't, you know what I mean? And so it, I felt like, I was like, I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I didn't realize how big Mitch Hedberg was until I got older. You know what I mean? It's but, fine. Yeah, like, it, does, yeah, it doesn't matter. But um, anyway, oh, just, just to yeah, say yeah. that, that I'm, I'm trying to write those kind of jokes. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm not saying I, I, I am able to now. I'm not. Insane, but you yeah, know, that's, that's but every time somebody comes and tells me, Oh, it's a statue, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah, you remembered. You gotta you start putting that? them on like mugs, dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna p- that'd be cool. A little, a little I'm Rick gonna. Diaz mug, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. hell yeah. I have ideas, I have merch ideas. And that's just your style, though. You're not gonna divert, you're not gonna start telling stories someday, I or you might, know. yeah, I don't know. I refuse to put limitations to myself. That's good. I just want to enjoy doing what I'm doing, and then mm-hmm. when I, if I feel like at some point my brain is has an idea that I'm able to write something else differently, I, I will. Yeah. Why not? Right. It'll yeah, yeah. just, it'll just like uh, expand your toolbox. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I, I might continue just doing one-liners. I may not. I'm mm-hmm. not. I'm You're still not f- married to one kind of thing. No, that'd be stupid. Yeah. Uh, and then if the audiences would be like, oh, well, you, who cares, man? I, I miss your, I miss your old style, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the same thing shit with music, dude. Yeah. Kanye and shit, yeah. you know? Uh, whatever. Okay. I'm, yeah. I just want to write jokes that I find funny, whatever form yeah. they get. You know, it's, it's that's what I'm trying. Because I feel like uh, I feel like a lot of people, I guess, when they're starting, maybe they try to say like shocking stuff, or that's just not what I think is funny all the time. And it sucks because like I had somebody like when I first first started, like the first couple times I went, somebody gave me a friend of mine gave me a tag on a joke, and he was like, "Oh, you should say like I eat that out of her ass or something like that." And I was like. I'll try it, right? Because it's like that's not funny to me. Yeah. That doesn't sound like what I want to say or how I would say it. Then don't and say I, it. No, but I, I just to just for like experimenting, right? And did I tried, I tried it, and it did work. Of course it did. And worked. that's what I. That was like I was like, ah, this feels shitty. It does. You know what I mean? I was like, I don't want to do like. I'm not saying I don't want to take a tag from like I'm always I yeah, always yeah, want yeah. to oh, yeah. hear people's ideas, but like if it's something that I'm like, that's ah, not how I would think or say that. 
and it just sucked that it worked. It not, sucked that it worked because because I I would have much rather it not worked, and I've been like, yeah, because I that's not how I would say it. But I mean, I have, I do a bunch of sex jokes or like mm-hmm. relationship jokes, but for me, my my rule of thumb is that if the punchline is sex, it me- it means I went the easy route. Oh, okay. Because I feel like almost any joke you can end up in a dick joke of some sort or in sure. an eating ass. Pun- uh, you know, that's always gonna be a punchline that's available <laughs> for almost any premise. Yeah. You know? But I'm like, but no, but what can I say that's uh, that, that has a deeper message? Because how many times can I say something about my dick or eating ass? You know what I mean? The, the, right. The moment you finish sexually, like either it's a, it's you're trying to say something about sexuality mm-hmm. and about uh, relationships to a partner, otherwise it's just a cheap shot. That's what, that's how I see it. Yeah, and if you can take, if you can start with a dick, like start the joke with like a dick joke, yes. and then end it in something that's more yeah. thought provoking. And maybe that's a little better. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. that's the best. That's that, I have one where I'm trying to do that, but yeah, you'll get there. I'll get there, man. It's just a slow. I feel like, and I've talked about this. People are probably sick of hearing me repeat myself, but it's my show. Fuck them. Yeah. Um, it's like I feel like because of the band thing, I know how long we just went on our like first big tour okay. last year with like a big big band took us to Canada and U.S. and um, and that took eleven years of grinding. You know what I mean? And just and meeting people and really getting better and changing our name one time. You what know was what I mean? previous name? It was called uh, Sisyphean Conscience. Yeah. <laughs> Good job on changing that. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Why? Well, it was funny because... How did you ever get to accept? How long did you have that name for? Dude, you would be surprised how many people have t-shirts with that name on it. We crushed with that name. We pushed it as hard as we could, but there was this point where like... We were just that band that crushed on stage that nobody could remember. You yeah, know what I mean? You remember that? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what happened, dude. And uh, and so we. Ch- it's funny because we changed the band name, and literally like six months, like shit was popping, like 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 way more. Like it's yeah. still small, but like the streams were going, and people were remembering. People were, you know, nobody was mad. Everybody was like, yeah, that was yeah. Why didn't you guys do that? You know, five years ago, you fucking idiots. But it's. I don't know. You know, we we were trying. We were young. I mean, we were in. I've been with this. It's been the same dude since high school. We all grew up together, and it's like we were just trying to be fucking you know metal and different and artsy, metal. and it was like the whole idea. I don't know. Conscience. It's not even worth explaining. But it was just like two words are not only difficult to understand but also difficult to pronounce and spell. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about bystander? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's so it's so much better, but. uh but yeah, um, it's, you know, I don't know. I forgot what I was going with that. Sometimes you gotta fucking just. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I so because I because it took so long to get like anything of value of like yeah. anything of uh, any type of break. You know what I mean? I feel like I have a good perspective of like time for like how long this is gonna take. It takes ten years. You know? Yeah. It's like so in ten years maybe we'll be you know, I'll be able to actually have like a fucking hour, uh, thirty minutes or something. You know what I mean? It's like a uh, night a good I, a good I hope hard you get set. Your 30 before 10 yeah, years, I hope so too. Probably five or four. Yeah. But we'll see. I'm uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. That's kinda all that matters, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So and it keeps me my the rest of my band is still in Oregon. And so uh uh they're I'm the only one that lives out here so I have to I have to stay That's on stage. That's great for rehearsals. Yeah, I mean, we, dude, we've been playing music together for ten years. It's okay. in our DNA. Mm. You know what I mean? And so we, uh, they send me like a backing track that has like the guitars on it and stuff, and I just, and that's the set we're gonna play. Our drummer plays to it, and we just, we, I just rehearse that like in here by myself. Yeah, exactly. But, dude, maybe we'll, maybe we'll come to, uh, come to Brussels sometimes, dude. Sometime, dude. <laughs> Um, so what do you do for your day job out there? You still you're not full time comedy yet? No. No. Okay. No, no. No. What do you what do you do for the day job again? I know you told people on Kill Time. Uh, I go to the office and I check contract templates. Oh nice, dude. Uh, and I, I mean I also help negotiate the contract. Are you ever sitting in there like these motherfuckers don't even know who I am in America, dude? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, know, I don't think like that. I don't think like, I've been doing my job for a while. No, the, like good. what I do mostly is like I'm not a lawyer, so I can't um I mean sometimes I'll I won't like I've experience with the contracts, but I'm not a I'm not a lawyer. So mm-hmm. sometimes the exact language is best defined by some of my colleagues. Mm-hmm. But I've been uh, negotiating contracts with uh, counterparts for a long time in the in the in the in the with the type of projects that we do or that I work on. So I have a, an understanding of like 
how to find solutions contractually with a partner, mm-hmm. how to address certain issues about payments, about reporting. It about so boring. It is incredibly boring, <laughs> but sometimes it's kind of rewarding. Sometimes. Yeah. Do you think it? Do you think it? Uh, like, because I've I've done a lot of project. Like, I've worked on development cooperation for a long time. So okay. a lot of the contracts were like, um, pro, uh, pro like projects with uh, li- less developed countries okay. to help them, like on to you know develop like their agriculture or their education oh, systems shit. or human big, ri- big deal shit human rights uh, yeah. civil society organizations so I've, 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 I've thanks to my little contract checking mm-hmm. we've been able to finance and fund organizations that were really doing local stuff that was helpful you know that was so there's, there's some rewards that you i've seen the results of my work mm-hmm. i've also seen no results from <laughs> yeah, my work. But there's so but, much red tape and bullshit yeah, exactly, in the fucking that's, industry. But it is the name of the game. Yeah. Um, but 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 when you do get to see, oh, oh, these people did that, and you're like, you know, I can't get into specifics, but it's, in some cases you're like, oh, wow, well, right. okay, I'm 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 happy that I'm contributing to this. Mm-hmm. It provides some sense of value. Like I've never worked for the private sector, never. Yeah. Like I've never worked for like my work has never been dedicated to my employer making money like a corporation or something exactly yeah. i've always been working for the interest of so the humanitarian kind of yeah yeah that's cool um do you think that with this like uh, all the stuff that's been going on in the last couple months with kill tony and everything mm. do you think that you'll is it is full-time comedy more on the horizon now than it's ever been like do you see a point here soon like if i can just you know get a little more traction or whatever that I'll be doing it full time, or do you? Is it still kind of just a dream at this point? Um, I think it. it I, I would like to. It's still a dream at this point, mm-hmm. and I would like it to remain a dream all the time because I feel right. like if I take it for granted, then it could uh, vanish. I think yeah. you, have, you have to. No, you have to work hard to get there, and I think I feel like you have to work even harder to maintain it. When I see like now that I get to see. Even it, not yet from very close, but like I see some professionals. I've been able to meet people like like Tony Hinchcliffe or mm-hmm. or Redman or whoever mm-hmm. I've been able to meet, and you're like, oh, these guys have been doing it for a long time, and you see the mindset that they have. It's it's hard labor. It's not. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard. There's so much like pressure. And like you have to be fucking awesome every time. <sighs> no, I mean I, th- I guess you can bomb sometimes, but it's more it's more like how. You are your own boss, and you are prote- you have a business to protect. Yeah. But right now, I'm at my day job. I'm an employee. I do my job. You clock in, clock, clock out, in, tell clock jokes. Out, I'm done. But as a comedian, you have to do your marketing. You have to do your branding. You have you to build a team. Kind of. You have to build a point. team. You have to make sure you have the right people around you. You have to be. You have to be looking at your sets like. You have to you look know. at your sets. You have to write. You have, it's hard. It's it's hard. Yeah. So what. It, but I'm closer now than I was before. Sure, yeah, way closer. Which is, you know, way, yeah, but it, but it's a double-edged sword, is kind of what you're saying. Cause no, it's, it's like, not about that. It's more. I feel like I don't have a, an hour yet. I don't want to mm-hmm. do a shitty hour to people. Dude, I've, how many jokes do you think? Because I feel like in whatever that was, 15, 20 minutes, you must have thrown thirty, thirty jokes at like twenty, thirty. It's like no, I know. it was a lot. It felt like a lot of jokes, and like they, I, 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 so okay. If I'm not doing crowd work, if I'm going at a slow pace, mm-hmm. I'm pumping three to four jokes a minute. If I'm going at a faster pace, I'm pumping uh, between five and eight jokes a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in a in a in ten minutes, I'm gonna do a minimum of thirty jokes. Dude, that's crazy. So an hour would be fucking. No, it's insane. So that's why that. I have to I have to work on other things to try to break it down. Yeah. I, that's why I'm working a lot on my crowd work mm-hmm. to try to like be able to. Oh yeah, I saw you doing some yeah. crowd work last night at Creek. Uh, <laughs> there was like at some, Creek. Yeah, you were at or two nights ago. Two nights like, ago. Two nights maybe. ago. Yeah, at Creek. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That went wild. That was weird. That was that wild. was so unclippable. Mm-hmm. You I'll, were you were asking this. Can we talk about it? Yeah, you can yeah. talk about it. I don't know if you can clip it though. <laughs> no, no, I don't <laughs> so know. Yeah. You can. I don't. You care. were yeah. you were asking uh, you were asking this dude uh, like what he was uh, like what his wildest sexual fantasy was. Yeah. And he wasn't giving it to you after a while, and you're or like, you know, at first, so you were like badgering him for it, and yeah. he was like, P. <laughs> yeah, you know what best. I mean? And you were like, P, P, what do you mean, P? <laughs> yeah. You mean P on someone or have someone P on you? And I was like, I'm done for whatever. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, holy, holy shit, shit dude. <laughs> and then I started asking more and more questions. Like, I started, yeah. and then I was like, 
maybe I know way too much about this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I regret asking this dude. Now I just, you're laying in bed like, did he want to get peed on or, pee, you know, peed in his, in his mouth? What does he yeah. want? What does this what guy do you want? want? What do you want? I'll give it to you right now. What do you <laughs> yeah. want? I have to piss. Yeah. <laughs> it was so much fun, though. It was yeah. fun. I love it when it goes wild. I love it when it just goes nonsensical for mm-hmm. some reason. You know, like, I, I, this is a clip I posted. I was at the, in Houston and this lady was on a date. And she was like, well, he looks like Bruce Willis. I was like, well, do you want to die hard? <laughs> and I just kept going. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, I did a set at, Sh- at Shakespeare's. I'll post the clip. I, don't ha- I didn't record it properly, but my friends recorded it from a shitty angle. So mm-hmm. I, it's better than nothing. So I'll try to post it. But I, I mean, it was, it, was, it was generic crowd work, right? So it's not like I was doing anything exceptional. But I was, th- there, was this, there was a couple in front of me that was just talking all the time. And they were all over each other. So I was like, okay, this is a date. And they're more into like fucking each other, mm-hmm. and they just decided let's go to a comedy show as a first date, dude. Right? It's yes. The, they didn't come for the they didn't come for the comedy. It was just like, more, where can we go that's non threatening? And right, that uh, is the dumbest yeah. idea. But they were right. They were bang on center in front of me, so it was really bothering me. That's yeah. that's the issue. It's like these guys. I was just chatting in front were of Were they me. just gazing into each other's eyes? Yeah, like, they, were, they weren't even looking at it. They were just, yeah, like, they were just yeah. looking at each other. I was like, so at some point I started talking to them. I was like, what's going on? It's a date. So I was like, okay, so it was a first date. And then I was like, and I was, <laughs> I was like, um, so are you guys going to have sex? Like, I was talking to the girl first. And mm-hmm. I was like, are you guys going to have sex tonight? She was like, and she was like, probably. Oh. I was nice. like, oh, damn, that's great. And, and I was like, so what's his name? And then she was like, oh, Connor. I was like, okay. And, and, and the guy was like, hey, like, what? Like, I was like, dude, I'm. I'm protecting you. I'm doing this I'm for you. I'm wingmanning you right I'm, now. I'm doing this for you. And I was like, so what's her name? And he was like, <gasps> <laughs> Exactly. That's he right. forgot her he name. He forgot her name. She was just on the roster. Dude, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, my yeah. God. And then, so I was like, okay. I was, I, so I gave him some shit. And then I came back to him. He's like, maybe he got stressed. So no. Okay. Second chance. What's her name? He blanked again. Oh, dude. my God. Dude, it was wild. So he did not get any pussy that night. No, so oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. there's more. There's more. So then, okay, the show ends, and a friend of mine went to the girl's ladies' bathroom, a lady, and uh, she, was, oh, she was in the bathroom crying. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, I left the show. My friends were like, no, no. I recorded them. They were arguing. Oh, my and God. And then I heard, no, at the end, some other, I still got more stories about that. No, they ended up, like, making out and everything. Oh. I, that, the guy had. Chaos. For, wait, the guy had forgotten on which app he had met her. Oh. He couldn't even tell her if he'd met her on Bumble or Tinder or what. Dude. And that girl, he still managed to. To pull. To pull. <laughs> through forgetting her name twice. Having no clue how In he public, met her. Publicly forgetting her name twice. <laughs> <laughs> that guy must have some serious game, dude. Seriously, dude. he must or have she- a he must have a fucking meat hammer down there. <laughs> I have no clue how he did that, dude. It was hilarious. He already sent the dick pics, and she's yeah. like, "Well, I'm not going home without <laughs> yeah. some of that." Yeah, I need so to see. Yeah. I don't care if my pride is, it, yeah. you know, I don't. I'm putting my pride down for this. Yeah, he must have a monster hog. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm like, saying, dude. Like, some generation. She already, <laughs> yeah, she already <laughs> got the the pics, like yeah. you know, elephantitis down there, or something. <laughs> that's wild. Is that the craziest shit that's ha- craziest shit that's happened to you in crowd work been in here or America, or here? I'm sorry, in America or uh, in uh, in for, you know outside the country. I mean, to be honest, so far I wouldn't argue that I've reached peak craziness when I see when I compare what I've seen in my crowd work compared to what I see online with people. I just mean for you though. But yeah, for me, I, I guess it's circumstantial. So I, so far, I guess it's been here. Mm-hmm. But I think it's also because I've uh, since I've arrived here on this trip. I've also been doing a lot of long sets, mm-hmm. uh, thanks to my newfound uh, headliner status for smaller clubs, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, which allows me to experiment more on my crowd work than I get back home. Well, I do have longer sets from time to time, but less often, right? So mm-hmm. um, uh, it's circumstance. It's who you find, right? It's right. it's playing that lottery game and just being just just being unafraid to go through and just asking the crazy questions because like the guy that says i want to get peed on that's comedy gold it's comedy gold but yeah. it's also like okay what do i do with this now do i go back to my jokes or do i right. dig in oh right? you dig into the pee guy for sure exactly but yeah. but sometimes i would have been afraid and be like okay that's funny let me go back to my jokes because i need to test my jokes and i only have so much time and i need to do my right. set yeah and i'm like 
I'll do another show after. Let me dig into this. Yeah, let me like. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put that. We're gonna abandon the mission for a minute. Yeah, let's. Just, yeah, we're gonna go on a side quest. Mission here. control. <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, this yeah. is happening. Yeah, we're gonna go on a side quest right now and talk about this P oh, guy. And I don't know. Uh, it's, and at Creek, I had another set where I, there was a lady sitting where the P guy was, but like the day prior or something. And and then I over get, like on the side. Yeah, on the side too. Just like right. Directly to sitting next to your And right. this chick had like an like an iced tea tattoo, but it was like a Long Island iced tea with iced tea's face in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I took a photo of it. And Do you like, have it? Yeah, yeah, I have the photo, dude. <laughs> Will you send it uh send it to to me really quick and I'll airdrop it yeah. to Harrison so we can pull it up. Wait, 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 wait. Let me turn my uh, oh wait. This is amazing. It was amazing. I have it right here. Um, so I can I can talk. So this okay. lady that had this tattoo was the lady that said the N word. Don't kill Tony. <gasps> no, they told me that, that after girl, the trailer trash girl. Yeah, Taylor trash. And she was like, and I was also talking to her about about like sexual bucket lists mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I was, and she was like, she was down to fuck me. Yeah, she was. I fuck that guy. Oh my god. Because then the comedian went after me. He's a friend of mine, and she was asking me, "Would you seriously fuck her?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm running away, dude. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> and because my friends, were, and then I go to the to the to the controls, and she was like, "No, that's the one that said the N word on Kill Tony." Oh, yeah, you. Like, oh, shit. Dude, imagine imagine you you bang that girl, and then you have a fucking ch- a child with her, or like oh, she dude. like you get her pregnant. You know what I mean? And she and then you come back, and she's like, "Rick, you like don't even know about it." <laughs> she's like, "Rick, meet your son." <laughs> you really can't um, find that photo. No, no, here. Will you just message it to me really quick? Um, I can airdrop it to you. Yeah, just airdrop it to me. I don't think you have my number yet. It doesn't matter. James Mike. Mi- no. Jam- no. Is it James's Mac Mini? No, it's not that one. It's uh, it should be it should say Taylor's MacBook Pro or just MacBook. I'll send Pro. it to you on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, just send it to me on uh, Instagram. I have we have to see this tattoo. You have to see it. We dude. have to see this. It's the best. I mean, that girl, you know, for being. For being who and what who and what she is, <laughs> yeah. that's a pretty dope tattoo. <laughs> that's it's pretty funny, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty dope tattoo. Yeah, yeah zoom, zoom in it. on that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Here, pull it into the middle of the screen. Yeah. Oh my god, that is amazing. That is so trashy. That is great, though. And then to find out that the same girl with the ice tea ice tea tattoo is yeah. the girl that said the n word on Kill Tony. Yes. Dude, uh, I was like, it was like, I was just, if I had known while I was on stage, dude, right? If I had known, because the the funny part was when when that lady said the, said the n word, mm-hmm. I was next on that show. Oh no! So oh, was, was that your first appearance, or was, was it a, like a comeback? It was a comeback one. Right here, Harrison. This uh, extension cable underneath, dude. The white one underneath the table. Um, and, uh, but I was so I was behind the curtain, like waiting to go up. Oh my and I god! Thought, and I thought this lady's gonna do her ten or whatever, and I, I'm gonna be going up. And I was just nervous about my set. And she would just keep saying the craziest shit. Oh, so dude. Tony was like. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was digging in. <laughs> he was digging in. And yeah. I think she did like 20 minutes. <laughs> you have long. to, though, with they someone bumped, like that. They bumped like one or two bucket pulls because of her. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, they, yeah, for sure. That would be a bummer if you heard yeah. it, if you found out about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. show ended, you know, right. it started, but but yeah, but she so she's got this crazy tattoo. It's that cool. is amazing. Dude. It is a cool tattoo though. Like I'm not. I want an ironic tattoo now. Yeah, dude. Like I want, you know, I, I want, want something like that. Yeah, I want a double meaning it's tattoo. It's well made as well. Like you can see <laughs> Ice T's face. Like whoever <laughs> did this was good. It's not a bad tattoo. No, it's hilarious, dude. I'm kind of I'm kind of still like afraid of crowd work. Like, how long did you did you do crowd work right away when you oh, started, no. No, dude? No. I'm I'm still like like no. don't derail me, bitch. You know what I mean? Like, and and so I need to yeah. just like loosen up. I did. Fi- I have gotten like a few jabs in, but like I don't know. I'm I'm scared of that lottery. I'm what sc- what you know what, I mean? what helped me with it was um, I used to do an open mic on Tuesdays in Bangkok at a bar mm-hmm. where I knew almost everybody. Oh okay. So there was, I mean, it, uh, that, not everybody, but there's a lot of regulars came. Mm-hmm. So it was a bit of a family environment. Kind of roasting your friends or whatever. And at the back of the bar, they would just talk and not even listen to the comedy show. So it was really hard to like get people to listen. Right. But there was a space where I felt safe that if I if I bomb, nobody gives a shit because mm-hmm. they're just supporting artists here. Yeah. It's not like they're gonna not let me come because yeah. I bombed. It's and just friends. It's like it's friends, right? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's like it's so it was such a safe space that I, I just got into the like, it, okay let me talk to the, these people let me talk to these people who yeah. cares like I, and that's funny you say that because that's where I'm getting at the you pro- you probably haven't I don't know if you've been to the Lucky Duck or not mm. you've been there yeah, yeah um it's rough it is rough. it's rough dude. I did not but that's stay. where that's where I did my first set ever and like that's kind of like my little like 
my little gym, my little workout. Like that's where yeah. I like, that's where, and then, so I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but it's, it's, it helps me deal with or learn to deal with chaos. I think, mm-hmm. you know, that's like the one that no matter what I hit it every week, just, oh, just because, and it's kind of similar where like, I'm getting to that point now where I like, I'm not, not worried about bombing there. Cause it's just yeah. people I know and like drunk ass motherfuckers. And yeah. so sometimes I, uh, so I have, that's the only place yet where I've like, dabbled in a little crowd work you know what i mean i don't have any great stories but the last time i went up there there was a couple that was doing that same thing and their bodies they were on um, you know there's picnic tables out there yeah and their body they were on the same side of a picnic table and their whole body was turned and they were literally <laughs> deadlocked deadlocked eyes like this and the girl's just the girl's just hitting her vape while she stares gazes into this guy's eyes oh my dude God. I'm just like, dude, Jesus. So I said something about that. And and it was like as they were leaving, I was like, oh, man, like let me get up so I can say something about this. Like that's the, that's the worst. And then they get up and you're like, fuck, I, have, I got nothing. I'm going to say – I'm going to have a controversial take. but uh, Go for it. I I, I mean I, I don't smoke cigarettes and I find I, I, I find the smell disgusting. But I can't take people that vape seriously. Ooh. I, I quit in August, so you can take me. I don't know. Do, do you vape? Little, bit, but you 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 have a little the little plasticky toy thing, because yep. I feel like people are just <laughs> they look like, like Sorry, they, they look like little things for babies. It's like it's like what is that? It's, mm. it's like with a little you know the little I can't take people with that vapes. The little the little nipple. It's like no matter how threatening they are, the moment they yeah. pull out a vape, I'm like, no, nah, you're like, just you're a joke human right now. I can't. The moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like you could clearly kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> But if I see you vaping outside, it'd be like, nah. Yeah. What's <laughs> up, bitch? Out, yeah, pussy. <laughs> yeah. What is that, dude? <laughs> no, I get it. I, I think the same thing when yep. I see people. Dude, you got oh, <laughs> your, your drugs are USB charged. <laughs> what is that, dude? How can I like, oh, no, do you have a charger for my vape? What is yeah. that? You got to you gotta go to a- uh, And you gotta, you're sucking on it like- it's like it doesn't it's and it's like a gay flavor like strawberry banana ice or something yeah, whatever where's the trash can i need to yeah, throw yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, I, you're uh, I, I can't take them seriously i can't take the people that vape seriously i just can't what about the people that like the old school vapors that still have the big giant <laughs> what about those ones have you seen those like the rigs like the uh, the original vapes before the disposables slightly came out, slightly more threatening. Yeah, <laughs> but still, just because they could throw that thing at you. <laughs> yeah, maybe I guess. Or it's like a hard with drive it. with a mouthpiece yeah. on it. I, I, well, I mean, if, if they're the ones that have the, the transparent section where you see the liquid mm-hmm. and it looks completely unhealthy, I'll respect you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? but so the, you'd you'd rather you'd rather see somebody like rugged smoking a cigarette, dude. Just like, yeah. That guy's a little intimidating, maybe. A little bit. Yeah. But cigarettes have a like I hate them. But they still have that cool factor. But you can't. They do kind of still have the cool factor. Like like vaping has a cool smoke factor, I but not the cool sucking on the vape factor. Have you seen the guys that do competitive vaping? Uh, I've seen people do amazing tricks with it. Yeah. <laughs> who who of these people do you think are cool? <laughs> no, none of them, <laughs> dude. It's like, it's like people are really cool at yo-yoing, dude. Will you pull up a video real quick? <laughs> Let's pull up competitive vaping video and see if we can find something funny. Um, dude, I remember when that shit was coming out. It's like the way they move is so gay, dude. Because they, they go, <laughs> and like the noise that it makes, it's like, oh, oh. it sounds like they're choking on dick, first of all. And then they go like this, they go. Oh, they're pushing the they're, they're You've pushing never seen the this? smoke. No. Oh, dude, I can't wait. To show I've you I've seen someone doing it, doing it in Bangkok. And some I saw a guy doing it. The at VC Vault. Cloud Championship oh 2016, dude. Of course, they had to have championships. Just turn the sound off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Harrison, sound. Yeah. Okay. See, this is cooler than what than what we're yeah. the ad is cooler than than what we're fuck, about to see. Fuck this ad. You gotta pl- you gotta play through this. No, you need the. Is that Chrome? Yeah, they I'm signed it, into a different account. I have but, YouTube. But they have extensions that remove the ads, though. Yeah, full screen it. Hell yeah! The Cloud Championship. I'm so excited for this. The VC Cloud Championship. Damn. Sponsored, <laughs> sponsored by Naked <laughs> Fish. Vape. Ta- what is that? Vape Tasia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe All right, I, let's hear. I, let's hear. I, I like vaping. So yeah, far. you like vaping. Those hot chicks. Yeah. Rock paper scissors. Dude, they're so intimidating. Dude, they're so tight. <laughs> it's just the corniest thing ever. But like, the video is cool, right? Like the way that it's like slowed up and sp- sp- or, uh, slowed down and sped up. But is th- cool. they're all trying to make faces like they're doing something intimidating. And they're just like, making this noise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 
That's the noise you have to make. Have you ever blown an O like with hookah? It's like, uh, uh, no. Uh, that's like the noise you have to make. Let me. Let's hear these guys talk real quick. Let's hear a little audio. For the trick pop, you're a fucking savage. <laughs> One more time. Give me you're, a savage. Savage. you're a fucking savage, dude. How does it feel to win tonight? Uh, it feels unbelievable. I can't believe I did it. There was a lot of tough competition. <laughs> yeah, to I can't believe uh, I made He's circles a hell of a trick. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Do you have any sponsors you like to I think? Mean, yeah, uh, hey. Kennedy Vapor, uh, SOY, Hot Wires, Vaptasia, Cotton Bacon, Crispy Caps, Fresh Juice Co, of course, who uh, brought me down here, All right. and uh, the Vape Boss app. Well, congratulations. We'll see you at the finale. Thank you so much. I would, I would love them to like win the competition, but like, I would like to thank my, uh, the, you know, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first and yeah, foremost. Yeah. Uh, he forever. was always with me. Yeah, he was always, he's the one that you know, like believe in your dreams and whatnot. Like you can you can blow a circle, then make it into two small circles, and then push them to the side. Dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Only if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't. Yeah. Be, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah. He walked so I could run. Yeah, dude. You know? Jesus walked on water, and I walked on smoke. Right yeah, now. dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, competitive vaping is it's stuck in 2016. What, what it's like I nobody like, does this anymore. What I like is that they still try to look alpha and tough about it like, yeah they all look like, like he they're all dressed like fred durst from you know yeah, what i mean why, like why does he have why, why is why is fred durst still a thing i mean you are kind of like fred Dursty. i mean right now i'm not fred Dursty right now <laughs> but that's a compliment hair, to but, me yeah. i wish i was more fred Dursty. fred durst is still cool dude limp biscuit is ironically cool i listened to no. limp biscuit unironically no fred <laughs> limp biscuit was not cool then ironically cool now cool I know, isn't that weird? Kind of like, yeah, they went through all that shit. They've earned their stripes. We've shit on them for so long, and they. I don't know his dad look when he went and did Lollapalooza though. Go I to get, the next picture, next not, over. No, it looks like I took my inspiration from Fred Durst based on that. Look, go to this. No, no, over here, the gray hair. Down. Gray hair. Too, yeah, Is that, that Fred one. Durst? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Zoom in on that. Don't click on it. Just zoom in with the pad. Um. What? Yeah, that's Fred Durst, dude. No way. That is Fred Durst now. What? That is that that I is no, from I, that's from like 2021 at Lollapalooza, in in Chicago. Well, he's lost weight. Yeah, I mean, he, it's funny. He's still still relevant, still cool, still still dressing cool. He kind of looks like he was in the Beastie Boys right now. Because dude, like, his uh, his image like that old Fred Durst. That shit was that shit was dope. Like back in the day, like yeah. pe that was like the like, it wasn't. It though. started no, it wasn't. But it started like a cool wave of like it started a wave of like people thinking that was cool and then dressing like that. Not in Europe though. <laughs> Not in Europe. What did people in Europe think? Because in of Europe, Fred nobody Durst? was really dressing like that with the how would you call it the 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 the, the, the white short pants and mm -hmm. all that. Uh, what do you call them those parachute pants or yeah, okay. i don't know yeah but it was more like no, jinko jeans yeah no we're listening to metal dude not to this we're listening to hip-hop we're listening to metal what is this yeah. thing roll and roll <laughs> but now i love it you, <laughs> you like it I, now okay i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's it's terrible hey roland's a good song dude it is a good watch song. your mouth no <laughs> watch your mouth yeah, watch your mouth dude watch your, you're, gonna, you're on the gore cast dude hey i might i'm gonna vape next to you yeah. if you keep shitting on yeah this. exactly <laughs> yeah i'm gonna blow some clouds next to you dude that's so funny. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's That might be a more recent picture of Fred Durst. I don't know. Fred's still cool, dude. I feel like in the, right, Fred in, some in the right photo, he's really trying to look like Ari Shafir. He does kind of look like Ari, actually, with that. Yeah. It's a little, little the, less that, Jewish. That explorer hat and, and disheveled mm -hmm. beard. That's kind of funny. So um, yeah. you said you're a photographer, too, right? Um, like for, kind of. I did fun? a lot of photography, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there any... Can we look at any of it, or...? No. No, okay. No, um you don't like post it or anything like that. I'm yeah, a I'm a professional photographer no. too. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I used dude. to. And I have books that are ready to be published, but I'm What? Uh, yeah. That's dope. You have to show me something after or something. Yeah, like no that. problem. Yeah. I, I but I, I have a whole project up about the US that took me five years to photo, but oh. but I can't I, I, I had a publisher but he was trying to rip me off. Mm hmm And I was I really wanted to me to pay him so much for the printing just to put his like his uh, the, the name of the of his publishing house on it. It was more about him than it was about you. No, I mean he's doing. he's well known in the photo book circuit. Oh, okay. Right? But but I was but then there was no the contract again. I make contracts for a living, so it was like the contract mm. was like two pages. And you're like, said, bro, do you know who you're fucking with? Right yeah, now? and it, and it, and it said nothing about him having to actually do anything to do the sales. 
So oh. I was like, so he wanted thousands of dollars. And he's just going to send you pallets of a book? And <laughs> pallets of a book. And then I have to do all of the sales and everything. <laughs> what a fucking asshole, dude. And I, and I would be in his catalog. Okay, oh, great. Wow. Uh, I mean, Thank you. This, it's, uh, it's a ripoff. Like, people rip mm-hmm. people off. So the one thing I'd be excited about is if I can be famous enough to, through comedy that people who want to, uh, will be interested in other things I do. Absolutely. Just because it will have my name that's on it. That's for sure going to happen. But that might take me 20 years, but I'll be patient. Like That's I, an I, that's just an added like layer of cool of cool shit that you do. Cuz you know like I mean? actors do that, you know, people mm-hmm. do that. They have the side projects and people are interested. And like everybody makes a liquor and stuff like yeah. releasing like a hey, I made this. Hey, yeah, I, exactly. I went and took the, these pictures all over the yeah. US. What was your can you talk about your project or you don't want to talk about it until mm, it's out? No, cuz it, it is replicable. Okay, okay. And, we won't talk uh, about it. Then. No, I don't want to talk about it. But what it, kind I, of stuff do you like to take pictures of, though? Because I, I talked to a lot of photographers did, on this podcast. Yeah, so it's, I've, it's relevant. I mean, I started with a lot of street photography. I've done a lot of por- uh, like outdoor portrait for t- photography. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I like again at the end of the day, what I like the most is street mm-hmm. street photography. Yeah. But not, I, I'm not trying to make it funny or impactful. I like yeah. to take just. Moment, like daily moments, like what's the identity of this a pigeon place? on the side of the road with no, a guy no. with a guy reading the newspaper next to it or something? No, not that. It's more like what's the identity of this place? I did and did I capture the um, the essence of where I am? Nice. Yeah, that's what I mean. I love street photography. Yeah. I like to take pictures of buildings, partially because I don't move. Oh yeah, but, yeah. Like I like to put a really wide lens on and just like blast. Buildings. Yeah, I, I used to do a lot of wide lens photography, mm-hmm. and then I moved to fifty millimeters. That's mm-hmm. my go to now. Are you digital? Is it all digital? Or uh, so? Well, I did a lot of film photography while I was in. Uh, li- I lived in China as well, and then in China, what was cool, it was super easy to buy the chemicals and have them develop uh, sent oh, home, okay. and I developed everything. You lived in China too, yeah. dude. That's crazy. You lived all over the place. Yeah, and uh, uh, we can do another podcast. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a whole yeah, but the, but it was really easy, and then I moved to Thailand, and then. Th- the chemicals were forbidden for to sell to the general public, a lot of them. And I was just like, it was really hard to get them. Mm-hmm. So I kind of gave up on it. And then I got to Europe, and I think I can buy them there, but I'm like, this anyway. Is but, but I have film cameras, I do. I have digital cameras. That's awesome. I didn't know you were into photography. Yeah. That's cool. So I, yeah, we could but talk. We could I talk would love another one sometime. Because I have, I, have I have a Pentax 6x7, mm-hmm. like uh, medium format. and But if they did a 6x7 uh, digital, I'd buy it. Mm-hmm. But right now, the only medium format is uh, digital is like Fuji, I think. I mean, there's a, the, the what's the other one? The German brand. Oh, Leica or something? Not like, uh, I forget, whatever. <coughs> but but they're all, but but they're not the form factor that I like. They're, they're used a lot for the fashion industry, but not mm. so much for like street. Yeah. But I love medium format lenses. I love, I love medium format, but I want to do six by seven. But they're not making like uh, sensors of that size. Mm-hmm. It's like six, six by seven is like four times thirty five millimeters. It's like four so thirty five a thirty five millimeter sensor. Mm-hmm. If you can if you can imagine a thirty five millimeter uh negative frame, so it's four times that. Okay. But a lot of uh medium format cameras that exist now are only twice. Uh I don't 35. know a lot about medium format, honestly. Well there's something about the depth of field and how much you can get in the frame that's completely different. Okay. So you can in a, you can get uh you can get a huge bokeh on a on a on a but still have a lot of the frame nice. in yeah as opposed to going on 35 all the way you're gonna to be much you have a much smaller frame and then you have to go to go way further out to get everything in to focus. get that distance yeah and then it, the, the relationship like that parallax is completely different okay i always wondered why people talked about the medium format thing it's amazing the photos i've taken with, but the thing is my, my pentax it's a super it's a pentax from like the 70s and the 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 the, the, the mechanism that rolls the film is a mm-hmm. bit fucked oh, shit. so the first frames, it it rolls, uh, it it moves the entire frame out. But mm. as I go forward, they start overlapping. So out of ten photos, I can use like six because at the end that could kind of like, create something cool though. But it kind of could. Cool. But yeah, it mostly ruins the photos. That I could took. create some shit that people make in Photoshop. You know, you know what I'm talking about yeah, when they like put the fake film strip in and shit. I know, but it's yeah. Yeah, it's not what you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, how how long have you been doing that for? Uh. 15 years 15 years when yeah. did you first pick up a camera when i moved to africa okay jesus christ dude. 
You, I've been moving around. You sound like one of those hot girls that talks about all the fucking places she goes with like rich dudes. Yeah, so I was in Bali this weekend. No, but I'm I going went, to Brazil next week. Except I, I, I was everywhere except in a cool spot. Yeah, right? and I was just in places that were just China. dangerous. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I went. China's I was, cool. No, the, my first like serious job I was in West Africa in Mauritania. So that's the end of the Sahara Desert. Mm -hmm. It's like the the westernmost country in in Africa. And uh, you can pull it up, Mauritania, you know, on Google Maps, and you can see the images. It's just sand. <laughs> it's just sand. And I stayed there for, I was in the capital. I wasn't like, I, I met Peace Corps people that lived in villages. And when they came to the capital, they were like, let's party, bro. Oh, they, were, they were living in mud huts and shit, you know? Like, oh, fuck. So, yeah, that's real, it. real Africa. Yeah, no, but pull it on Google Maps, though. Like, if you, because it's, it's just more type in, just type in Google Maps afterwards. So like Mauritania, like size-wise, it's bigger than France. I would say maybe it's like Texas size or something like that. It's not small. It's big. Go just hit maps up top. Yeah, if only you could type maps.google.com, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, yeah, that'd be great. No, just <laughs> yeah. hit search now. Yeah, it's M A U M A U M A U. Yeah. Yeah, just it's down. There it is. Yeah, just click on it. Yeah, boom. And now type uh, on the layers. Yeah, layers uh, at the bottom left of the where the map is. Layers down there. Down corner. To, yeah. Harrison hasn't been here for a while. I know, I know. It's, it's fine. We got you. We, it's fine. Boom. That's just <laughs> sand, bro. It's just sand. <laughs> it really is. And if you zoom in. Shit. So what's cool is it, one, one thing that's cool. Let me get up one second. Yeah. So that's pretty famous because it looks like an eye mm -hmm. from the sky. It's like a, me a huge meteor impact. Oh damn! Yeah, and uh, you been you been there? No, I wasn't there. It was too far from where I was living. But I've been, no, I did. I, wait, I did because where it says Wadan, if you really zoom in on Wadan, it's right left to the eye. It's an old like uh, UNESCO heritage city. There's a few of them, and it's really beautiful. It's like an old fortified forty. It's old old stone, and but anyway, I, I yeah, I've been all over that uh, pretty. But now, now people were not allowed in that area anymore because they were like not far. There were like uh, ISIS training camps and stuff like that. Oh shit! But back when I was there, you could travel through all of that pretty safely. Scroll back over to the eye. You see how the the thumbnail <coughs> on the top left looks mm -hmm. like Star Wars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's in uh, Shingeti. That's uh, which is a different town, which I also had projects in. That is fucking wild looking, yeah. dude. Yeah. But I, I didn't go in there. Cause mm. I, once you, if you're in it, you can't really notice it. It's from the sky. Yeah, that's, it's that it looks something. cool. Yeah. yeah, you have to get a drone or some shit. But if you uh, zoom out, you can really see the shape of the eye because you can see like the eyelids and stuff. It, boom! You see? Oh yeah. It is like an eye. That's crazy. Yeah, How so many? I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. How many countries have you? Do you think you've lived in? Lived in? Uh, well, um, mm, 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 mm. Like six or seven. Six or seven. Yeah, that's crazy. But that yeah. was my first job, so it was uh, it was it was fun. But so the, so when I knew that I got that assignment, I knew I was gonna go to the Sahara. Mm -hmm. So I thought I thought, and that w that's when the Nikon D seventy came out, okay. like the first good yeah. digital ref re uh, reflex camera came out. DSLR. DSLR. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I'm getting it. Yeah. So I bought a camera, and then I. So started. you have some dope pictures from back. Then? I have pictures. <clears throat> from the entire country Dude, to everything I'd love to see those sometimes one day I'll make a book about it yeah. I have like photos of like you can just locals send me some too I'm just gonna look at and them yeah yeah I, cause I cause I, I visited some like for work I, I went to completely out of the beaten path mm -hmm. and to places that are not accessible to general public so I saw some really beautiful things yeah yeah um, how long have we been going Harrison uh, minute 12 what Hour, hour 12? Uh, hour 12, yeah. Oh my God. God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 12. Like, fuck, did we just start recording? You need a producer that can uh, read time. <laughs> I have one. I have one. He's just not here. Harrison. Harrison. This is what uh, vape does to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Um, I, uh, yeah. yeah, we don't, we can, uh, we can, we can just probably try to wrap it up here, but, um, I, I didn't want to I don't want to didn't want to touch too much on like the Hans Kim stuff. This will come back. This will come out after Michael's. So after the Kill okay. Tony, where the I was there that night that you uh, announced that your guys are doing a rematch. Thing. Oh, you were in the room. I was in the room. Yeah. How come? 
You got tickets? I was just I was hanging out with, with hanging Michael. Out? Yeah. Oh, Michael got you. In. Yeah, Michael. Uh, got Michael me got you. In. In. Hey, good job, the, Michael. The homie. Yeah. Yeah, Thank yeah. You, you so you actually, there. actually, I think somebody else got me in, but he was working there. Okay. So it was fine. Yeah, yeah, but it was. I saw it was him. Fun. I saw him that night. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a good hang. It but was, uh, it was a bit crazy. It was whack. It was wild. Yeah. But so you're you're are you uh, excited for that? And I mean, what what are the, what's the is there stakes on this one at all? Like I like feel, I feel like there's. Uh, I mean, people will see the episode. I feel like there's no other stake at the end of the day. Yeah, it's not like you're. Get, it's not a battle for regularship, right? It's just a pride I mean, uh, battle. I, well, I think I think uh, for my opponent, it's a pride battle. Okay. Like he, I think he feels he's a better comedian than me, and on paper he should be. Like he, and you know, like he's been doing it for longer. He's been doing bigger shows for longer. He's mm-hmm. done much bigger things than I have, and he's been writing jokes for longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like he feels that he didn't do well enough. Okay. So because he challenged me to a yeah. match. Um, and what was the question? I got lost. Oh, just My if focus there's stakes. Is, yeah, I don't think there's stakes other than he needs to save his honor, mm. and I need to prove that it wasn't a fluke. Right. Like, and so they're gonna nah. make it. What's different about this one? They're gonna make it longer, or they were suggesting three minutes, and then we argued on stage for <laughs> about it. Yeah, because you're like one. You're like quick. I do quick one-liners, so one minute's better. No, for what me was interesting, what was funny was Tony said, and this will come out after the episode. Comes this out, is gonna right? come out so after the episode. Yeah, I'll Tony sure. said, okay, it's gonna be three minutes each, and I think I understand. Well, my brain was going quite fast while he was saying all of this because mm-hmm. I had no information prior to being on stage and him announcing that. Mm-hmm. And I was like. Yeah, of course, with the build-up that we had last time, one minute is pretty underwhelming, and it's pretty hard to get an opinion about anybody's comedy so fast. Right? If you're really trying to to get a decision. This is basically yeah. like the difference in UFC between like a, th- a three-round and a five-round. Kind of thing, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. So I understood. Let's give them more of a show, right? Right. Let's give people more of a show. But then I was like, well, three minutes. But I didn't say anything immediately, cause, mm-hmm. cause be- not because I was waiting, but because Hans immediately said... Oh, but three minutes, and I still have to do one minute every week until. And in my brain, I was like, "Yeah, dude, you're the regular. You yeah. want regulership right. against me, so you have to do your job as regular." That's what was going th- through my head when when that happened. But then I was thinking, and and Tony was like a bit like, "Yeah, you should do it." I was like, "Well, wait a second. I don't want to do three minutes because it favors hands." Right. And, and we're like, why? Well, he does longer format jokes, so therefore he can build his so laugh. You brought up a good point. I brought up a good point. And Red Band turns around and is like, yeah, it does favor him. Yeah. <laughs> at which point, then Hans looks at me and is like, oh, then I do want to do three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, why couldn't you figure that out immediately? Yeah. Like, if he, the moment he said three minutes, Hans would, should have just said yes. Right. But then, and then Tony was like, okay, so it's going to be three minutes. I was like, wait, I didn't agree to three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I did not agree. I definitely did not agree to three. So we settled on two. Okay. Because well, it favors me. It, it, the shorter it goes, the more it favors me. Sure. Okay. Just because of the format of styles. Mm-hmm. But I know that I can crush two minutes. It's fine. I can crush three. I can, you've seen me do 15. Right, yeah. I can, I can do longer sets. It's more about what jokes am I going to get in? What choices am I going to make? Mm-hmm. It's, it's different if it's one minute. Two minutes or three minutes, and uh, do they all have to be new? Like, they have to be new to, to kill, kill Tony. Tony. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, that'll be interesting. But you know, uh, I hope you guys can like you know, I hope every, you guys can squash the the beef after this one and everything. Uh, be cool, to me, it's, cause it, it would be nice for it to all be in good fun at the end of the day. For me, as a as a fan of the show, and I like both of you guys. You know, I'll say I, this. I just, I'll say this. To me, there's no conflict mm-hmm. other than. After he shat on me at the New Year's Eve uh, event, yeah, that people I don't think, will, yeah, that'll be out. Too, that will be also yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Um, after it was all said and done, I feel <clears throat> really competitive about yeah. this. It's weird because I was so, th- I was there, you know, working yeah. uh, with with Yoni and Michael. I think backstage. I saw you. Yeah, 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 that's where I met you. I think yeah, the first yeah. time, but. Um, it was a blur. I, did, I couldn't hear anything. Oh yeah, right. I, I couldn't I, hear anything. So it was like it's it's kind of cool for me because I'm I'm excited to actually watch it yeah. when it comes out <laughs> and see like what happened because I don't fucking I didn't hear a thing. So definitely controversial. Yeah. Definitely oh controversial. yeah. I mean, obviously everybody freaked out about it. And uh, but 
Yeah, I'm 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 excited to have a second. I'm excited to go to LA do comedy. I've never done that. That's I'm gonna ex- be cool. I'm excited to do a huge stage. It yeah. makes no sense that somebody with my years of experience is gonna get to have that experience. It's so awesome. I'm incredibly it's grateful and happy. This, yeah. you know, the whole thing, right? The whole thing makes no sense. I'm just grateful. It's just beautiful opportunities for me, and. And I get to make somebody that's angry at me a little angrier. Which to me, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it, it's just funny. And or if he yeah. or if he wins, it's like whatever, cool. It's like the whole thing was cool. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I was expecting him to win this time, mm-hmm. and he did. Well, uh, because they left it up to the crowd, and they love him. Yeah. This yeah. time, the, the format is be different. Of the jokes. But yeah. and the one thing about the the voting format is, I had no time to determine while I was on stage whether that gives them even more room to manipulate the result or not because now the crowd will only have one vote out of everybody Mm -hmm. so it means if the crowd cheers for me the panel could vote for hands right yeah you know what i mean like does it does it even so then it would be controversial again right so like because now my target is like okay i want to win the crowd over but it's not enough now yeah Right, so so now we're in Texas. Hands a, a crowd advantage. Mm-hmm. Now we move to LA, where I feel it's going to be a more neutral advantage and have more of a shot at winning that crowd. So, the but now they take so that away from me. Well, I'm assuming I'm right in that yeah. estimation, because maybe it's still a hands crowd, you know. But like, if in my head I'm right about that, it's all it's it's all. I studied economics, right? So in economics, part of uh, economics is uh, game theory. Mm-hmm. It's something, it's a field of, of study. And uh, I love game theory. So it's analyzing all the possible outcomes and, you know, making hypotheses and what's going to be the outcome if this happens or that, or that happens. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, is this, who's going to be on the panel? Is it pro hands people or not hands people? Yeah. Is it people that like one-liners or people that hate one-liners? Yeah. I have no clue. Yeah. So all of this is very subjective. The whole thing to me too, it's funny because yeah. like it, we're we're in. Com- it's like you almost have to take a step back and rem- remind yourself that this is stand-up comedy. It's stand-up comedy. Like this is not wrestling. It's not. But it, and so that in itself is a joke. Like it's it is. the whole thing is a joke, which is funny. And I wish I do wish that people were a little bit less. I know it's great for clicks for yeah. for for clickbait for it for is, everything yeah. for it's great for Kill Tony and which is awesome. And but it's, it's, it's good for both of you as yeah. far as press goes, whether it's negative or or positive sure. for yeah. either one of you but i do wish that there was more of an element of people just like it's a classic like can you can we just have fun with this like because yeah, people online are fucking crazy about it oh, and dude. they're so annoying and you see like now fuck this show's rigged and it's like <laughs> dude it's a fucking they're making a joke about having comedians which comedy it's subjective th- it's it is objective to a certain point of yeah. like if you're you know getting laughs or not or if you're if mm. you're funny or not but like it's subject it's mostly subjective like music is to like taste and what people like right and yeah, so it's, it's like it's, it's not like a fight where you can really judge like did that dude beat that dude's ass yeah but i don't know it's also funny because even within like fighting do you follow ufc and all yeah. that kind of stuff yeah v- very yes yeah I'm I'm not, i do, I do too. Fan. I, do, yeah. I am too yeah, yeah. but uh but it's like it even with those it is kind of fun too because even with some of the fights it's like no that was a shitty decision right oh yeah and so that that happens all the time so it kind of it's like oh yeah this is like the perfect blend of that and so it's cool regardless i'm i'm a fence sitter i like both of you guys you know uh hans is the hometown hero here you know what i mean so it's like i i love both of you guys but it's like and your styles are different and you're both funny to me, so it's it's. Uh, I just am having so I have so much fun with all of it, you know. And it's I like, feel like the crowd had a lot of fun. Like, I think they, did, they had a, a lot of and fun. And people just love to be haters, you know what I mean? So there, yeah. people love a chance to get on there, and whether it's like fuck Rick or fuck Hans, you know what I mean? It's like people just want to. They just want to go in the comments and talk shit. So what was interesting was them. I was I think it was a uh, Chael Sonnen again. Uh, he's really my reference for a lot of this because he he really understands promotion. But he mm-hmm. was talking about how talking about uh, Ian Gary. Oh yeah, that and whole all, thing all, with all, his all wife. The st- all the stuff that happened with his wife, and he was like, at the end of the day, like online comments only represent a, a small percentage of the actual audience, mm-hmm. right? So, I was getting s- so whatever hate I was getting, or Hans is getting, or the, in different moments of this bloody timeline, it's the loud minority, basically. At the end of the day, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll go on stage at the arena, and the crowd's gonna boo me, and then they, the one I got on, they cheered for me, mm-hmm. and I was like. Yeah, it's like I can't focus on what's happening online. Yeah, because people that have a life are not spending their time criticizing anything, you know. Uh, and but a lot of people are are spending time now telling me that I won, <laughs> and showing me a lot of love. And mm-hmm. I'm really grateful to anybody that does that. Because n- 
to me that you don't need, you don't need to necessarily hate hands or anything. It's just I I'm glad that people appreciate what I'm doing mm -hmm. and acknowledge that my jokes have have some value because because that's really what I'm the, only five years in. Dude, so yeah, like, that's what the journey is all about. Yeah, I'm like, trying to write jokes with the technique I have today, and and I think I'm doing good for where I am. Yeah, and I'm glad people notice. Because the whole thing, yeah. going to mics and stuff, you're just trying to figure out if any of this works yeah. or is any of this funny. Yeah. And you're that's basic. And that's probably, I don't know, because I haven't been in a long, but even probably 10 years in, you're like, I'm going to try this new thing. And like, I hope this worked. And it's, it's like, okay, these people laughed in Arkansas. Are they going to laugh? Does it yeah. work everywhere? And so it's, yeah. it is kind of cool to see that it, it you know, the, the one a little thing, validation goes a long way. The one thing that has not changed is for all of the jokes that I write, I can keep about one or max two jokes out of 10. You can, oh, okay. That's it. Like okay. for every 10 jokes I write, there's one that has actual potential. Yeah. And for that, I have to bomb at mics. <laughs> I yeah. have to be like, are you going to hear this now? What was that like yeah. when you went out and 8,000 people were like cheering? <laughs> what, <laughs> like what? Because I know you keep your cool pretty well. <laughs> like that, you know, like you're pretty, your, your, your stage presence is pretty yeah. stoic. You know what I mean? You know what? You know what was funny was when I, when I uh, gave hands the finger, mm -hmm. somebody told me, dude, you had a really steady hand. <laughs> I can't remember who, who was watching. It was like, uh, no, I think it was it was uh, Ty Rivera. Oh, okay. I did his podcast. I was like, you had I a super. Ty. Were you nervous at all? Because you had a really steady hand. You weren't like. And, you know, and I was like, I was trembling, but crazy. But like body wise, I was like, boom, you know. Yeah. I tried to keep my, just like. That just must in. have been so wild to go. Yeah. That fucking was, roar of eight thousand people. I was just nervous about bombing. Mm -hmm. I was nervous about getting hate for no reason. Yeah, because my jokes were killing at clubs. Like I knew my jokes were good. I mean, but, not necessarily good in terms of as a comedy critic. Do you feel like I'm elevating the art of comedy? But like, <laughs> more of a when I've said these jokes in front of an audience in this part, this part, this part, this part, this part in French, in English, all these jokes were killing. They work ninety five percent of the time, mm -hmm. just killing. Right. So whether whatever you think about the jokes, they were just working. Mm -hmm. So I knew my jokes were good, but. This is a competition format, not a. And it's in an laugh. arena, so yeah. it's like. But I had no idea. I'm yeah. like, and I'm and I'm a f foreigner, like. Right. So it's like, you're just gonna boo me. <laughs> yeah. But no, they laughed and they enjoyed oh, the yeah. jokes and it was fun. Well, that must have been interesting to be like, oh, okay, so this does work in an arena. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, most people in five years in wouldn't know if their yeah. jokes that they were doing at clubs worked in an arena. That's kind of cool. I but, mean, hey, the bigger the crowd, the easier it is. How much do you think that that, and we can wrap this up. I'm sorry, I know we're, no problem. we're going a time. little bit long. But, uh, like, I, it's like how much of, there's so many variables to a joke work. Like, how, how much of it is, like, they were going to laugh at anything you said because they love you and it's that environment. Like, pro no. probably probably not, but it's, like, still, that there's some effect on, like, you know, well, if you watch, if a, if a comedian's big, then people yeah. will just kind of laugh at what that what whatever they're saying sometimes, right? Well, if uh, and I'm and I'm not shitting on hands, I promise. I'm just I'm just using this is the most recent example Easy I can think chill. of. I'm just kidding. When he did the, he, it's online. He uh, um, both him and I did an interview with David Lucas. Okay. And during that, in, in during Hans's interview, he plays one of the jokes he did at the arena for David Lucas. But it's not a recording from the arena. It's a recording from wherever he did it uh, prior. And I could hear the pops he was getting on different beats of the joke. Mm -hmm. Like he was getting laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. At a club. At a club. Okay. And at the arena, he was not getting the laughs that he got at clubs mm. during the joke. Interesting. So for some reason... <laughs> Either the way he delivered it or, or the timing, like, and he and he and he's talked about this. It's something about he, how he said the joke must have been different or something. So there's something about doing it to an arena that that changes things, right? Maybe the timing or the the fact that it's not a the percentage of the crowd that knows you and thinks you're funny just because you're there right. and they're excited or to you're see whatever you personality. Or, yeah, uh, I don't know. Like I felt that in hindsight when I was watching myself, I I only I've only seen me on that stage once at a friend's house they, they put the thing on mm -hmm. and i was like dude i was way more i wanted to be more laid back and i had a way more attacking attitude mm -hmm. um so my delivery was off as well like but it, it worked out it still? worked out still but it wasn't my normal demeanor mm. like i was i don't have the experience to just be me in an arena do you think it, w it was enough that people noticed or do you think it was one of those things that only you noticed because it's you 
uh, well, I know this because it's me, right. but uh, but it gives me, it tells me what I need to work on and improve on. Whether the mm-hmm. audience got that at that moment is not important. I know this and I want to work on it. That's awesome. I mean, at least yeah. it was a good, at least that you could learn something from the whole thing. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. You know there's something I mean? about, there's a few things I did right and there's a few things I could have done better in that one minute. Well, we'll see what happens in LA, right? But it's going to be different jokes. It's, it's going to be, be a different whole different jokes. ball game and twice the crowd. Yeah. Are you going to try to hit the comedy store while you're out there? Uh, that'd be cool. I'm going to try to hit whoever will have me. I'm sure you could get up at comedy store. That'd be legendary. I mean, that's too. that's bucket list. So I'm not yeah, going to. Yeah, gonna, cool. so yeah but I can't be like, yeah, I'm going to do the comedy store. I'm going to no, be like, no. I'm going to try to beg them. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to so beg for a spot. I'm, I'm gonna, sure they'll have you. I hope I'm, they I really hope they will. I can't be disappointed if they don't. I yeah. will understand if they don't because I'm only five years in. I'm, you know, the, there's just legends performing there. Right. All the time. Uh, I hope that my clout will get me in for <laughs> a few spots <laughs> yeah. and that I won't disappoint them too hard because I know, I know what I am uh, to people that industry for a long time and people say i'm funny like you know like now that i met comedians on kill tony tell me no you you have you you have good writing you're Mm -hmm. funny so that's great you're on the right track i'm on the right track i'm on the right track but dude being on that stage oh my god yeah well there's probably a lot more of that in the future dude you're, it, you're, you have to keep working hard, and you have to I think keep you have working the right, hard. The right yeah. mindset, you know. What I, I mean? hope so. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, dude. Thank you for and, having um, me. You know, uh, I want a good, clean fight. Yeah. You know, touch gloves. No, I'm just kidding. Nah. <laughs> We're not touching gloves. I'm mean, covered in Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, plug your shit real quick. People uh, probably already know where to find you, but at Sadman Rick, Sadman Rick, R I C, Sadman Rick, uh, on every platform. Um, yeah, just come and see my little reels and just uh, mm-hmm. my dates are posted there. And, and that's come it. see you at the LA Kia Forum. Come see at the <laughs> come see me at the Kia Forum on May 10th uh, on Kill Tony, <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll do something else in LA because I know they have more than one show. But uh, let's see where that goes. I have For no, sure. I don't know. Well, thanks again, brother. I appreciate Take it. Take care, man. Yeah, run that outro, Harrison. You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.